Welcome to this River Publishers book discussion. I'm Philippa Jeffries and I have with me Cass Utterhouse from TU Delft to talk about his forthcoming book, The Component, A Personal Odyssey Towards Another Normal. Uh, Cass, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Perhaps you could start by introducing yourself a little bit and how this book kind of came about. Well, that's a long history, so <laughs> I will cut it short a bit. <laughs> It has many aspects. I think the, the most important thing to know about me and about us actually is that I closely work together with a visual artist, mm -hmm. it's my wife, Ilona Lehnert, and we decided in 1988, mm -hmm. so that's quite a history, yeah. in 88, to join forces and try to fuse art and architecture on a digital okay. platform. So I was already interested in the digital before. Mm -hmm. I was interested in art, but we had separate ways. And now we said, OK, let's try to join it. And that resulted in, in many events we organized and later on in quite a few buildings mm -hmm. we realized where actually you can see that it's proof of that attempt yeah, to fuse mm -hmm. art and architecture. And in the end, not only art and architecture, but also a fusion of different disciplines on okay. a different platform. Because once you work digital, you can communicate with other disciplines easily. Mm -hmm. And that we found out in the in the 90s, say, and one of the, the main buildings we realized back then is the water pavilion in the netherlands okay which is can easily be seen as a sculpture mm -hmm. a huge big three-dimensional thing and in the interior we did an interactive environment which okay. interacts with the people with the users with the public and it was an environment that never changes so that's where mm -hmm. we found out that <coughs> Once you work digital, mm -hmm. it's not only to to build static environments, but actually you can make dynamic environments. That and in what kind of way were they alive. interacting? In what way? In what way were they interacting with the people? Um, there are many ways, of course, mm -hmm. to interact, and their movements are sensed by uh, okay. by sensors. And. Uh, the movements are actuated by actuators. Uh, but there are so many ways to do that. So in the salt water pavilion, we have mm -hmm. uh, uh, sensor boards built in the structure of the building and mm -hmm. just playing with these sensor boards, like tilting, oh, okay, yeah. well, almost like a surfboard. Yeah? So you on a surfboard, so to say, and by moving your body, you would change the the parameters of the light mm -hmm. environment and the sound environment and the virtual reality environment. So we all had that okay. back then in 97 already. So now mm -hmm. we are talking about metaverse, but actually this was already there. And that, that quickly will lead to your next question, probably. What is another mm -hmm. norm? Yeah. That normal already existed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that was going to be my next question was on the book. Uh, the title references an odyssey towards another normal. Um, yeah, could you describe further kind of what you mean by that and what you're defining as another normal and what's kind of relevant so, to that? Yeah, so for us, that is a normal situation. I had to work like that, okay. to think digital, to fuse art and architecture, to think interactive. Mm -hmm actually in general to use technologies, current technologies that are available to you somehow. So not the most expensive ones, but the available ones. Mm -hmm. And use it in your own practice, whether you do art or architecture or any other profession. Just use what is developed uh, in technical sense and also in social sense around you. Mm -hmm. So us, that's normal, but then we don't represent the majority of um, of, uh, of of people of designers. Actually, we were quite a minority. 
say, state of the art upfront, and uh, we represented maximum one percent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, of, of designers who are really interested in that. For us, normal. For society at large, not normal. Um, what I also found out, more or less, that you need a critical, uh, a, a critical value, a critical amount of people using technology before you can say it's a paradigm shift towards mm -hmm. another normal. And that other normal is the higher level <laughs> we are slowly entering now, 30 years later. So I think it takes time before something like this really grows and spreads mm -hmm. itself into society and becomes normal. Okay. That's uh, what I call another normal, which is possible, which is already mm -hmm. there, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's not yet the paradigm shift towards that. Okay. Could you give a few examples of kind of some of the technologies you're thinking of when it comes to um, the paradigm shift like at the moment? Um, well, there are, there are the obvious ones, of course. Yeah? So in 97, I think we purchased our first cell phone, if I yeah. remember well. Oh, no, it was earlier, 96, I think, it was a lot before. Um, so if you only uh, only realize what an enormous change that has made, mm. and you can really say that people live by their phones in yeah. many aspects now, because it combines so many functions into one single small device that it's... Mm -hmm. uh, it's it was hard to believe back then that that would happen and that so many people would actually uh, consider this as normal. I mean, mm. if you are born now or maybe if you are uh, born after the millennium shift, absolutely, you think this is the normal situation. <clears throat> well, I can have more examples if you want. It's about uh, in our profession, which is uh, <coughs> not normal back then, something we started mm -hmm. was the idea of mass customization. The, okay. idea, of, the idea of parametric design to yeah. robotic production. Parametric design means something like building a family of components that are strongly related to each other, mm -hmm. but are not the same. Like the leaves on a tree, say, huh? like the birds in a swarm. They mm -hmm. all act in the swarm, the leaves act uh, as the leaves in the tree. It's, it's in a similar way the components we design for our buildings act like that. They're heavily okay. related to each mm -hmm. other parametrically. They follow the same logic, but they are not the same. And also we link that to the production method, which is robotic production or computer numerical control, mm -hmm. CNC production. And if you do that, if you have that hot link from file to factory, then you can do mass customization of all the components. Okay. Because it's meaning, a collection of individual components, right? Yeah. That can be altered. Completely liberation from, mm -hmm. the, from repetition as such. Okay. So if you look around you, here we come back to that idea of the normal and another normal. Mm -hmm. If you look around you, still most of the buildings are still produced according to the old paradigm of mass, mass production. Mm -hmm. Many elements of the same. I mean, just look at any skyscraper. Yeah. You, you know. It. So absolutely 99% or more is still living in that old paradigm. Mm -hmm. 30 years ago, we started that new paradigm. Well, not only we, there was a, a generation of architects doing mm -hmm. that. So, as said, not more than 1% of the total population. Mm -hmm. And we started uh, uh, inventing that you could, do, you could do otherwise. You could build a much richer society, a much richer diversity mm -hmm. by uh, implementing the fire to factory parametric design to robotic production, that fire to factory method. Mm -hmm. 
mass customization. So you could customize in the masses. And yeah. No, that that is really a revolution. And yeah, definitely. Now you, now you can see it happening more and more, mm -hmm. especially in in cultural buildings, in more advanced uh, uh, offices, larger offices that are adopting this method. And what are the real challenges here? Like kind of going using parametric design as your start, like first point of focus. You mean ch challenges in the sense of difficulties or challenges yeah. in the sense of opportunities? I was thinking difficulties more because I was thinking why is this not kind of taken up more broadly? But I mean, opportunities is uh, yeah. interesting to hear about as well. Yeah, I think opportunities uh, are evident uh, because you mm -hmm. you build a much uh, you build diversity. Yeah, it's include it's inclusive, which is another interesting aspect of it. Also, a societal mm -hmm. aspect, which can lead to a, a much more positively felt uh, techno social society. Yeah, we implement that. But okay, in terms of difficulties, it's the building industry. Okay. I mean, it's the it's the big players it's the fuel industry it's the agricultural industry it's the medical industry it's the military complex whatever mm -hmm. these big players they want to do as much as they can the same as they did before because they invested a lot in it mm -hmm. it's their business model to change that business model is a challenge. It's yeah. like it's like wanting to change the the, the trajectory of a super tanker. Mm -hmm. well, you know how that goes, a super tanker. It's it's hard to change course. Yeah. But it can Thanks. it can be done. But you need that critical mass for it. You need that that enough people saying this, doing this, to change the chords. And I have no doubt it will happen. But mm -hmm. for a lifetime, it's a challenge, absolutely. Yeah, okay, thank you. And now slightly going kind of back to the book a little bit. So you started writing this book during the start of the mm -hmm. COVID pandemic. I was just wondering how this yes. influenced your ideas in the book itself. Uh, yeah, well, COVID allowed me to write it in the first place <laughs> yeah. because we could uh, retreat in a, mm -hmm. in a house we have in, in Hungary. There's a beautiful view, which I have right now as well, over the Danube. Fantastic. So it was, it was an environment where we could uh, live freely, walk in mm -hmm. the woods without uh, face uh, face masks, uh, so it was a very good place to be mm -hmm. and uh, and it uh, offered me time simply like that because uh, business was always online mm -hmm. so it just offered me a lot of time to do to write again it's not my first book I've written no, of course not. <laughs> quite a few books before but mm -hmm. uh, the last book was uh, called uh, titled towards a new kind of building, mm -hmm. a guide to non-standard, a designer's guide to non-standard architecture. But that was published in 2010. So 10 years later, I started on another one. Mm -hmm. And, and how have things changed to... in that 10 years? How have things changed? Well, in the first place, it was nece actually necessary to write it again because Things things changed indeed. There were more more social implications. You know, of uh, there was uh, much more much more pressure on solving climate crisis. Mm -hmm. and there was a financial crisis. There, there were many things. So yeah, I had to somehow put uh, the way we work in a broader context. So there, <clears throat> and COVID actually made it very clear to me mm -hmm. that there there were many parallels actually in how to fight climate change, how to fight uh, pandemia, mm -hmm. how to fight uh, 
well, basically anything that is uh, that is too big for mm -hmm. for a single person to fight by uh, by science by listening to science and actually creating create algorithms create rules that are more beneficial mm -hmm. creating rules that actually lead towards diversity inclusiveness fairness mm -hmm. justness instead of rules that are oppressive they lead to complicatedness if you have oppressive rules you have to find secondary tertiary rules to mend a problem if you have uh, mm -hmm. a rule that actually opens up possibilities then mm -hmm. it's a different story. Then yeah. it's a, then you will have a sort of natural effect of uh, of growth and evolution that is that is beneficial. Mm -hmm. so I still this... believe in, that, in in the power of of those kind of rules mm -hmm. that are good. And um, among the many rules that are not good. <laughs> yeah. And I guess this can be reflected in architecture in your work here. Yeah, well, of, of course, my work is limited to uh, to design and architecture and a, a bit of art. But that's mostly Ilona's part. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, yes, it's of course limited. So I have a limited view on <laughs> on the world, a biased view, I could uh, even say. Everyone has a biased view. Yeah, of course. But uh, but I see parallels. Mm -hmm. So that was your question. Huh? What yep. what is it that COVID might might have brought uh, as uh, what changed actually mm -hmm. in the last decade? And I think it, it's about that. That it's uh, we are not isolated mm -hmm. in our profession. And I can see parallels to other professions. And I can see how we can actually design rules for a mm -hmm. better world. Okay, great. Um, and then I'm afraid we're coming to the end of our time together, but I just wanted to end by asking you kind of along that line, what do you really hope readers will take away from your book this time? Well, maybe it's just that, that, it's, uh, that the, the future is not necessarily complicated. Okay. But we should uh, strive for complexity instead. And this is a very subtle difference. Huh? Mm -hmm. Because complicatedness is when you look at things, like talking about architecture, and you see things are clashing into each other. It looks very complicated. How did they do that? But there's another version of, uh, well, another attitude in architecture, which actually creates complexity which actually has a similar kind of diversity in appearance, but has also a strong internal logic to it. <laughs> and I hope that reflects uh, is reflected in my designs, like the, the Bauna in Budapest and Liva Tower in Dubai, that we did. You see that. Eh? You see mm -hmm. that everything is different. It's supple. It's, it, it has a feeling of being natural. And for me, that is a kind of nature that I like mm -hmm. to create. Yeah, I like to create a new kind of nature. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much, Cass. Thank you for joining me. And yeah, congratulations on your new book. Yeah, thank you.